So today we're going to go over the uh, basic components and configuration of a VIC-1 intercom system for use uh, primarily in military vehicles such as the M35A2 Deuce or the M998 Humvee or others. Um, these were used by the military primarily from about the early 1970s through the early to mid 2000s but they have primarily been replaced by the VIC-3 and VIC-5 intercom systems now. So what you see here on the table are the basic components of the VIC system. Uh, we're not going to go over operation necessarily today, just the components. To, uh, to start, no matter how many stations you have, you're going to need power and a, con a master control station. That's what we have here in the middle. Uh, the plug on the right is the power cable in this case. Uh, we're assuming that the power is going to come directly from the battery. So you use a CX4720 power cable that goes into this jack here, J508. Uh, you set this screw here to INT only for intercom only. And you then start attaching your crew stations. This is the AM1780 amplifier. This is the master control control station and is the heart of the AM1780 VIC-1 intercom system. To connect your uh, crew stations you're going to need uh, one of two types of cables. You're going to need either a CX4723 cable which I would say is the most common and comes in a variety of lengths. In this case uh, we have coming out of J504 which is the commander's control station. We have a one and a half foot uh, CX4723 cable here which is attached over to a C10456 control box. In this case we've attached to this control box a CX8650 breakaway cable, bailout cable, which is connected in turn here to an H161F headset. There are many permutations and versions of this H161 headset. I would say by far the H161F is the best variant. One, it's the most recent. Uh, two, it uses this cannon plug here rather than a typical snap plug. Therefore, you can interchange it with a CVC combat helmet liner. <clears throat> You can also connect using what's called a TR4723 cable, uh, and that's what we've done here. Um, I've only ever seen one of these in the wild, and this is it, but it has a different connector here, uh, a basic screw connector as opposed to the connector on the CX4723. I prefer the TR4723, but again, I've only ever seen one of these. In this case, we have the TR4723 coming out of the jacks at the back of this, or at the top of this AM1780, coming down, and it is attached, in this case, to a C2298. These C2298 control boxes, uh, in my experience, are far more common than the 10456. The difference being, you can see there below the volume control knob, uh, another output jack. I'm not really sure what the function of that jack is. We can cover the difference of that at some later time, but I believe it is to control uh, radio communications from the control box. The C2298 does not have that interface. In this case, we've connected the C2298 to an M80 microphone. This is a more or less a trucker mic. It has no audio output. It's only an input device. So effectively what we've shown so far is a two position intercom system with one C10456 connected, one C2298 connected, uh, an H161 headset, and an M80 mic. Now we're going to go over uh, other communication components. For example, here, if we were to connect this C10456 via this CX4723 8-foot cable to another one of these jacks at the top of this AM1780. 
we would turn this into a three position intercom system. This C10456 is connected to yet another uh, diff uh, audio device, in this case a CX8650 bailout cable uh, connected in turn to an MK1697 CVC headset liner. Uh, the CVC headset liner has integrated headphones, which you may be able to see here, and an integrated mic controlled by a toggle switch on the side of the helmet. We could also make this a four position intercom system by connecting this C10456 via its CX4723 uh, 20 foot cable again into one of the jacks at the top. In this case I've connected this C10456 to an H250 handset pictured here and an LS685 speaker pictured here. The H250 is really just a more modern version of the H189 handset which can also be used with this system. Essentially uh, any, com any audio component can be used with the system so long as it has the U229 connector pictured here uh, with a 5-pin connector. Uh, an alternative speaker would be an LS454 speaker. Uh, it's a more heavy duty speaker, or at least the casing is more heavy duty. It's metal. In this case, the LS685 is very simply just a, uh, a plastic casing. But I, actually, I think the speaker components are all the same. It is not amplified. Well, I hope that you find this uh, introduction and overview helpful and that you can build your own VIC-1 intercom system, expand a VIC-1 intercom system, or find the accessories that you want for your VIC-1 intercom system. Thanks for watching.